So in this video, we're going to determine whether one matrix is a linear combination of a set of matrices. But before we jump into that, what we want to recall is that we did linear combinations in the context of the vector space Rn. So before we talked about general vector spaces, we looked at vector spaces specifically in the context of vectors that lived in Rn. And specifically, we looked at, looked at examples from R2 and R3. And in the first lesson on linear combinations, this was the definition of linear combinations that we were given. We said, hey, let's say we have a set of n vectors in Rn. And then we said the vector v uh, in Rn is a linear combination of those vectors. If we can find scalars such that we can write v as a linear combination using the scalars of the vectors we pulled from Rn. So what's going to change now, because we're talking about general vector spaces, and spe instead of specifying a specific vector space, we're just going to generalize things and say, hey, let's pull a set of n vectors from a vector space v. Uh, and then if we can take any vector v in v, so instead of saying v has to come from Rn, v could come from the set of all uh, polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, or the set of all two by two matrices, whatever our vector space happens to be. But we're gonna define the linear combination in the same way. We're looking for a set of scalars such that we can write the vector of interest as a linear uh, combination of those vectors using the scalars in question. So we're just generalizing what we already did with linear combinations to matrices in this context. So here it says, determine whether this matrix is a linear combination of this set of three matrices right here. So the principle is going to be the same as it, as it was when we uh, worked with uh, vectors of two components or three component vectors in R3. We just look for scalars A, B, and C, or C sub 1, C sub 2, C sub 3, however you want to identify your variables. We're looking for uh, scalars A, B, and C such that a times this matrix plus B times this matrix plus C times this matrix will generate or yield this matrix here. And if we can find values of A, B, and C and that work, regardless whether they're unique values or infinitely many uh, ways of doing it, we know that this matrix is a linear combination of the other three matrices. And what we want to notice is that we can generate a system of equations from this this equation right here, the, the matrix matrix equation, but that means a times one plus b times two plus c times one has to equal three, right? The sum of the uh, row one, column one components has to add up to the row one, column one component here, and we can just step through and do that for each of the four entries: minus a plus zero b plus c equals one. That generates equation two a times 0 plus b times 1 plus c times 0 equals negative 1 generates equation 3 and 2 times a plus b times 1 plus c times 1 has to equal 6. So we generate a system of uh, four equations in three unknowns a, b, and c. And we want all four equations just in case there's no solution here. So once we've set, a, set up a system of equations, we know from the work that we've done this term that we can then create an augmented matrix from that, from that system. We have the coefficient component of the matrix and the augmented component. So we construct our augmented matrix. We can either solve this by hand, which isn't too difficult, or we can put it into a computer algebra system and putting this into, for example, GeoGebra Classic 5 and putting it into reduced row echelon form yields this result right here. And from the result, then we can interpret that, yeah, A, this is the A column, the B column, the C column, so A equals two, B equals negative one, and C equals three. So we get, we get scalars A equal to one, B equal to negative one, and C, or sorry, A equal to two right there. I don't know how I got a one out of that. Negative one and then C equals three. So that tells us that we could write a linear com write this matrix as a linear combination of, of these three matrices by doing two times 
the matrix 1, 0, negative 1, 2, minus from the negative 1, the matrix 2, 1, 0, 1, plus 3 times the last matrix 1, 0, 1, 1, and that's going to add up to the matrix we're interested in. So indeed, this matrix is a linear combination of the other three.